All right. So this little warm up uh, serves to illustrate one of the things that we will be discussing a lot about, which is about ways to efficiently access data. And here we have uh, discussed this in the context of uh, books and paper. But uh, during this course, of course, we are going to discuss about uh, those topics in the context of uh, database management systems instead. Another topic that we will discuss a lot about is about how we can safely update data by multiple users without interleaving those updates in a bad way. And uh, another topic is how we can uh, recover data in case of a system failure and bring it back into a consistent state. And those are only some of the topics that we will be discussing about. Now, we will discuss those topics in the context of so-called database management systems. And the idea here is essentially that you have one system which manages all the data that you're interested in. And then you have multiple applications that want to work with the data. They don't access the data directly, but instead they use some, uh, uh, some generic interface from the database management system, which uh, internally works with the data instead. Now, um, this architecture uh, that you see here, um, you might be wondering why we want to use those uh, database management systems. An alternative would be that each application essentially maintains its own data. And people used to do this before relational, before database management systems uh, came up. Um, if you do this, then uh, a first problem is that different applications might actually want to work with data which has some overlap. For instance, if you think about uh, a university like Cornell, um, the application which handles enrollments and the application that handles tuition, they might have uh, certain data items that both of them uh, want to access uh, in common. So for instance, uh, some data about which uh, name is associated with a certain net ID. So the first uh, problem that you would have is that you might store data redundantly. So you store, so you use more disk space than uh, probably necessary. And even worse, you might have inconsistencies because if um, you update the address of a student, for instance, only in one application, but uh, not uh, in the data associated with a different application, then that might lead to all kinds of problems. Another thing is that uh, when working with data, there are certain generic uh, functions that you always want. For instance, you typically want some kind of mechanism in order to restore your data in case of a sudden power failure, for instance. And uh, if uh, each application works uh, independently with its data, then you have to re-implement that kind of functionality for each application uh, separately. So you have a uh, code duplication. And uh, also, if you don't have uh, the database uh, management system as a layer between the data and between the applications working with the data, it means that your applications become specific to the format of the data that they are storing. So if you want to uh, reorganize your data format, then you typically also have to change the application code. And with database management systems, you have this uh, layer of abstraction, which um, sits in between the data and the application. So if you internally change the data format, you uh, probably don't have to change the application code at all. So those are a couple of reasons why database management systems are as popular as they are. So uh, you might uh, not have been consciently using database management systems yet, but in the background, uh, typically hidden behind a couple of interfaces, um, you probably have been, you have been using database systems already in many situations. Whenever you enroll in a course, whenever you transfer money or you shop something on Amazon, for instance, in the background, it always generates entries in a database management system. There's many different types of database uh, management systems. In this course, we're gonna look at one specific type, which are called relational database management systems. 
We will also look at a couple of uh, different systems more towards the end of the course, but the focus is on those relational database management systems because they are currently the most frequent variant used in industry. Now, the type of data that they are processing, it is a structured data and more precisely, it is a relational data. Now that is uh, different, for instance, from unstructured data such as text uh, or video. Um, this relational data essentially looks like a collection of uh, spreadsheets that is highly simplifying, but for the moment, this is what you can uh, think of. And uh, if you have uh, this uh, structured relational data, there are still many ways in which you might want to process it. Here we are looking specifically at the uh, processing that uh, can be done with the so-called SQL language. It's the structured uh, query language. Uh, as opposed, for instance, to uh, um, performing machine learning over your structured data, which is also possible. Now, this is the focus of the course, but having said that, many of the principles that we will learn about, about how we can efficiently access and manage large data sets, they can actually quite easily be transferred to different types of data or different types of processing as well. This is the uh, most traditional architecture for a relational database management system, the one that you uh, see here. Of course, it is still a highly simplifying. And if you look at uh, books, you might uh, find uh, different variations of the architecture that you see here, depending on which aspects of a database system they choose to highlight. Um, about the first half of this course, is essentially about discussing those different components that you see in this picture in detail and uh, essentially opening them up and uh, looking at what's uh, going on inside. <clears throat> Let me quickly see, I saw there's a couple of questions in the chat perhaps. All right. There's a couple of questions about a recording. So the video recording of this lecture will be made publicly available. And that is, by the way, also the reason why I ask you to post questions uh, in the chat as opposed to uh, directly speaking up. Because once we post the, the video uh, publicly, then uh, we want to make sure that all of you remain anonymous. And we will post that on different video platforms because I know that YouTube, for instance, is not accessible from all countries. Um, we are going to uh, announce the, we are going to give the links to the videos on Piazza after the lecture. There's multiple instances of that question. Okay. And the slides will also be posted on the course home page. All right. <clears throat> So we will be discussing a lot about the different components in a relational database management system. Now the following, I give you a very short overview. Um, don't be concerned if you might not get every detail right away. We are gonna spend much more time discussing those uh, things in the coming lectures. Now, as already quickly mentioned, the data that we are looking at, that is mostly relational data and a relational database that is uh, essentially a set of uh, relations where you can think of each relation as some kind of a spreadsheet. Um, so that means that those relations, they are essentially two dimensional. You have different columns and you have different uh, rows. And in each field of the relation, you either have a specific value or you have a placeholder indicating that the corresponding value is unknown. And uh, one thing that's also important to know is that those relations, they are associated with constraints on the data that essentially restrict uh, what data you can insert into them. For instance, as a simple example, uh, typically your columns in the relation, they are associated with a data type, which means that all the fields which belong to the same column, they can only contain values of that type or a different example for one of those constraints would be that uh, we can link different relations and we can say that a value which appears in one relation must also appear in another relation. And we will see more examples in the following uh, lectures. 
All right. Now, um, in order to work with the data, you're using the interface of the database uh, management system. And uh, the most common language supported by those interfaces that is currently the SQL language, the structured uh, query language, which is a very classical standard. It's essentially around since the 70s. And uh, you can uh, use commands uh, formulated uh, in that language in order to analyze and to update your data. SQL is a very powerful language. If you look at the most current version of the standard, it has many hundreds of pages. So in this course, you're only gonna see a subset of those uh, features, um, but it will be, um, let's say, enough for the uh, most common use cases. One thing that's very important to know about SQL is that it is a declarative language, which means that you don't really describe to the database management system the steps that the system should take. Instead, you rather describe something like a desired result, and then you leave it up to the database management system to figure out the best way of actually achieving the result that you want. <clears throat> there might be a couple of more questions in the chat. Okay, and so for relational data, we're gonna discuss in much more detail what that looks like in the following lecture. So here I'm just uh, giving you a quick high level overview of the different components in a database system. All right, now after formulating um, a command in SQL, uh, this command is uh, processed by the query processor, which uh, first of all, parses your command into a tree representation, which makes it easier to work with it internally. And then it uses a couple of rules in order to simplify uh, that tree. Um, in the next stage, we use the so-called query optimizer in order to select out of many ways of, of for instance, generating the same uh, data, the most uh, efficient one. So that is a little bit like the example that we have seen at the beginning where we essentially a sort about different ways of accessing the same data, some of which might be more efficient than others. And then after we have selected a plan by the query optimizer, we forward this plan to the execution engine, which will then execute the different steps of the plan one after the other one. Now, in order to execute those plans, the execution engine needs to access the data and the storage manager contains different components that help uh, to do so. Now, uh, the storage manager, first of all, supports different methods of accessing the data. For instance, uh, as we have already seen initially, um, we might have different indexes which speed up access to specific uh, data items. Um, another efficiency aspect when working with data is that in many cases you are not able to fit your entire data set into main memory, which means that a large percentage of your data is located on hard disk. And uh, in those cases, it becomes very important to minimize the data movements between hard disk and main memory because that can actually take a lot of time. And the storage manager also has components which try to optimize the movement of data between hard disk and main memory in order to make it as efficient as possible. A common situation is also that you have updates to a data set by multiple users uh, concurrently. In those cases, we need to be careful not to interleave the updates of different users in a bad way that might lead to an inconsistent database state. So the storage manager typically has components which uh, control concurrent access to your data in order to avoid bad, bad cases and to make it safe. And then finally, if you suddenly lose power, for instance, uh, in your system, then um, if, you don't, uh, if you don't prepare for it, you might end up with a state where your database is inconsistent. So this is why the storage manager also features components that uh, allow you to 
recover your database into a consistent state after some kind of system failure. And we're going to discuss in more detail about all of those points in the following lectures. So this is the components that we will be focusing on for the coming lectures, but uh, there's many more components in a database management system. For instance, it has components for establishing connections between a client and the database, for verifying, for, for access control, uh, for verifying your credentials, and various tools for optimizing the setup of your database. But uh, we are not going to discuss about them. We're going to mostly focus on the components that I gave you a little overview about. Now, this was a very high level overview of topics that we will be discussing about in this course. Um, a little word on logistics and on how this course relates to other courses on uh, databases that we have uh, here at Cornell. Uh, so uh, first of all, um, this course is a little bit less about implementation and hands-on experience. If you're interested in that, then I recommend to look at the database uh, practicum in this or one of the following semesters listed as 4321 and 5321, where people implement a small database management system in Java in uh, Teams. Um, we are going to discuss uh, about the fundamentals of database management systems in this course. So if you're rather interested in uh, looking at what's going on currently in database research, then I recommend you to check out the database seminar listed as 7390. And uh, in general, if you are interested in uh, learning more about uh, database topics after taking this introductory course, then have a look at the advanced database course 6320 uh, next semester. A couple of questions. Right. And um, the database practicum, that is, uh, that is typically done in teams. We have in the past allowed some exceptions. If somebody really uh, couldn't uh, work uh, uh, in a team for, for different reasons, but that would require some explicit permission from you. Typically it's done in teams. Okay. All right. Now for the course organization, um, we will have uh, three lectures per week. It's always the same time, Mondays, uh, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 10.20 to 11.10 a.m. according to uh, Eastern time. Um, I'm going to share the Zoom link on Piazza before the lecture. We're also going to have the links on the course homepage. And uh, we will have video recordings of the lecture that will be shared on multiple platforms. Now, I have already uh, discussed it, so the questions in general, please ask them in the Zoom chat in order to make sure that we uh, keep you anonymous when posting the, uh, the videos after the lecture. <clears throat> All right. Now, one important point is uh, grading. And in the past years, we typically, we used to have an exam for this course. Now, uh, this time, it is very difficult to organize exams, so we are not going to do that. Instead, the grading will be based on a couple of homework submissions. Um, also, a difference to uh, past instances of this course, um, we used to uh, have group work for those homeworks, but uh, now, um, since all the grading is based on the homework, we need you to work on those uh, homeworks alone. We will have uh, seven homeworks in total. Uh, out of which only your best uh, six submissions are counted. So you have essentially one homework where you don't even have to submit it, or perhaps uh, I recommend you to uh, keep it uh, for an emergency or uh, maybe something goes wrong. You, uh, for instance, your submission um, is a little bit uh, late or something. So whatever it is, you have one homework uh, free but uh, your best six submissions are counted. And um, in addition to the actual homework uh, submission, there uh, will be some Zoom interviews with um, 
um, about the uh, homework uh, submissions. So um, I'm not going to interview all of you, but uh, typically I select the best few submissions uh, from the homeworks for uh, an interview, which is very short. It's just uh, something around uh, five minutes. And uh, typically it does not at all change your grade. If there seems to be a large gap between your uh, performance in the Zoom interview and the uh, homework submission score, then we take the uh, average of both of those uh, scores. And the topic of those Zoom interviews that will be the same as the homework and uh, it will mostly be about uh, asking a few questions directly about your homework submission and uh, potentially about some exercises that are very similar to the homework. So your grade is based on uh, this combination of things. Um, I assume that most of you have already found the course homepage, but if not, make sure to check it out and to read it carefully. It uh, contains information on uh, course uh, logistics, also the links to the Zoom lectures here, and uh, generally some administrative information, also some information about uh, what we mean by academic integrity, what you are allowed to do when working in those uh, homeworks and what you are not allowed to do. Of course, you are generally not allowed to copy, um, to copy from uh, others during those homework submissions, but uh, you find uh, all the details of what is allowed and what is not allowed on the course homepage. So please make sure to read through it carefully. For the homework assignments and for submitting your homework solutions, please uh, have a look at the course uh, management system. And for discussions, if you have uh, questions, then um, your first uh, point of access that should be uh, Piazza, the corresponding course uh, homepage. Um, also, I will post the links to the lecture on Piazza. And if you have any exceptional announcements, we're gonna use a Piazza as well. So please make sure to register on Piazza for the corresponding course homepage. Now, I think there might have been a couple of uh, questions in the chat, let me have a look. All right, there are some questions about how the enrollment works with uh, CMS. So there's a slight uh, delay uh, for syncing up in CMS. So uh, after you enroll there, uh, it might uh, take maximum a couple, so typically no more than uh, two or three days, then you should also have access to the CMS material. So Everyone who is enrolled in the course and has no access to CMS by next week, please uh, let me know, then we should do something about it. Um, CMS is uh, mostly required for the homeworks. We uh, will have our first homework still in a few weeks from now. So uh, right now you're not missing anything, but uh, if you don't have access by next week, uh, nevertheless, please uh, let me know quickly and uh, then I will make sure that uh, this gets synced. All right. Now, um, in terms of other resources, about uh, two thirds of the course is uh, based on the book Database Management Systems by Ramakrishnan and uh, Gerke. So um, that is uh, what you can, I mean, I will typically give you a reference to the uh, corresponding chapters uh, in that book um, when we are discussing uh, about uh, the course topics. Um, also, particularly towards the end of this um, course, we will discuss more about some uh, systems that have appeared um, in the last uh, couple of years. For those cases, I will sometimes give you references to scientific papers, which uh, describe those systems uh, in more detail. Um, one important point, this course is gonna be much more fun if you can actually use a relational database management system. I will also sometimes give a little exercises during the course where um, um, if you have access to a database management system, 
then you can immediately try out your solutions to those uh, little in-course exercises, which are not graded. But nevertheless, I recommend to install one of those relational database management systems on your computer. And uh, more specifically, I would recommend you to install the Postgres uh, database system. Here you find the corresponding uh, web address. This is what I will uh, also use for demonstration. So the nice thing about SQL is that it is highly standardized. So you should be able to use many different database management systems uh, interchangeably, but every once in a while there is some little uh, difference, some little SQL dialect that uh, differs between different systems. And so if I give examples in order to be sure that you can uh, run them, so I would uh, recommend you to go specifically with one of the more recent versions of the Postgres database system. All right. <clears throat> now, a couple of questions in the chat again. Okay. So there is a couple of questions um, about the wait list. Um, I'm aware that uh, currently um, there is a long wait list to this course and I'm getting lots of mails on this currently. Um, so um, it might seem like we can um, easily increase the, increase the cap. Uh, if it is an online lecture, the problem is that we also need to grade your submissions. And uh, there's a certain maximum ratio from uh, one TA basically the number of submissions that one TA can correct over the year, it's uh, somewhat, uh, there is some bounds to it. So uh, the problem with increasing the capacity limit that many people have asked me for that is uh, that with the given number of TAs, um, we cannot uh, grade too many submissions. Um, having said that, um, the videos of this course will be posted uh, online, so there might be a chance that you can at least uh, follow the course content, even if you are not immediately enrolled into the course. Also, in my experience over the first uh, couple of weeks, there's uh, typically um, a little bit of movement. People will be checking out different courses and try to find the one that is most interesting to them. So um, depending on the position that you're on, on the wait list, uh, there is uh, still a decent chance that you can actually get into the course. Okay, a couple of other questions in the chat. All right, a couple of questions about um, which version of the book you uh, should get. So, I mean, um, if possible, of course, I would recommend one of the more recent uh, versions, but uh, most of the material that we do in this course, it's uh, about classical uh, relational database management systems. So that doesn't change uh, so frequently. Uh, so yeah, I recommend to get the, the most recent version that you can. I think you uh, should be fine even with uh, one of the uh, older versions if you have one of them already uh, available to you. Um, so in principle, um, the content will be covered in the lecture, but uh, it can be helpful in order to get more details or just in order to uh, have a, a complementary a description of the same topics to have access to the book. But strictly speaking, it should not be needed. All right. And um, when is the first homework due? So uh, the first homework is due. Uh, so you will have um, one week in order to uh, work on the homework after it has been uh, published. And the first homework will focus on SQL queries. So um, it depends a little bit on how fast we can uh, progress with the chapter on SQL in the course. It depends a little bit on how many uh, questions there are in the course. So I don't want to give a precise date at this point, but uh, typically we have covered the material for the first homework and can release it after about um, two weeks of course. All 
right? All right. Um, okay, question about whether we can post the slides before the lecture. Yes, we can do that. And uh, I would post them on the course uh, homepage. All right. So now <clears throat> I have given you an overview of the topics that we will be treating in the course and uh, about the logistics. So uh, now, um, if there is something that is uh, unclear, in particular about cross logistics, I would invite you to ask a, a question now. Um, okay, questions keep coming in. Um, one question that we have here is what will be the mode of the submissions for the homework? So uh, the homework submission will be via the course management system, uh, CMS. Um, <clears throat> the uh, homeworks, they will generally include uh, things like, for instance, so I mean, they will be a little bit more, I don't really want to say theoretical, but I mean, there will be homeworks where you have to calculate something, for instance, to uh, estimate processing costs according to models that we see. Uh, there will be homeworks where you have to do a little bit of, um, where you have to write SQL queries, for instance, or might have to do a little bit of uh, programming, even though that will not be the focus. <clears throat> and uh, those homeworks, they uh, have to be submitted on CMS. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, you, are, you will be working alone on those uh, homeworks, which differs from past instances of this course, because grading is entirely based on those homeworks. <clears throat> And question is whether the chapters and sections of the textbook will be posted that correspond to the course content I'm discussing. The answer to that is yes, uh, I will post that. It will be in the slides to be precise. All right, any more questions about course uh, logistics at this point? There's one question about whether you are responsible for learning the material which is in the text. Um, by in the text, I assume uh, you mean in the in the textbook um, if it is not covered in the class. Uh, so you are only responsible for uh, the material that I'm covering here in the class. So the, the book is a complementary material which provides uh, more details. Sometimes maybe if you haven't understood uh, things after I explained them in the course, it can be helpful to have a look at the book where you find an alternative a description perhaps with more details but uh, for the homeworks um, so if you can completely understand everything that I uh, describe here in the lecture then in principle you don't need you don't need access to the book it is uh, supplementary material Right. And um, yes, you can, I mean, so you can in principle use different database management systems than Postgres. There is uh, many alternatives uh, currently, um, but uh, I recommend you to specifically install a Postgres because sometimes there's slight differences in the uh, SQL language, the different database management system support. And uh, if I show you examples uh, in the slides, then um, they will run on Postgres and they should run on most other database systems as well. But in order to be really safe, it makes sense to install uh, Postgres, one of the more recent versions. Okay. 
any more questions on course logistics? Right. Just making sure that I don't overlook any questions here. Okay, and here there's a question about those homework uh, interviews. Um, so those interviews, they are so those interviews, they will be about uh, five minutes uh, in length. So they're very short. Um, and uh, I don't expect those interviews to change your grade at all. So it's uh, nothing, nothing to worry about. Um, so not necessarily everyone will have to make one of those uh, interviews uh, for the different homeworks. I uh, make interviews with the best uh, submissions. So I'm going to uh, at least interview the five best submissions and uh, potentially a little bit more. So um, you might not have any uh, interviews over the semester. Um, the interview will focus on the same material as the homework. So it will essentially might ask a couple of detailed questions about your homework submission. And uh, perhaps I'm going to ask questions about exercises that are very similar to the uh, homework submission. And uh, I typically do not uh, expect uh, those interviews to change your scores from the homework submission. In exceptional cases, if there seems to be a large gap between uh, your uh, submission and uh, the uh, interview uh, performance, then we would take the average score between the interview uh, score and the submission score. But in uh, typical cases, I don't expect the interview to change your grade at all. All right, and great question, office hours, yes. So uh, you will find the uh, office hours on Piazza. If you go to the uh, staff uh, tab, um, I, the TA, some TAs might already have posted uh, their office hours. Generally, we uh, try to cover different time zones with our uh, office hours. Um, I will also have uh, office hours and the times will be written on Piazza. So um, right now, not everyone might have posted their office hours yet, but that should happen by the beginning of next week. So all office hours are virtual and uh, you find the corresponding Zoom links as well as the times on Piazza. Any other questions on course logistics? And whether you will be able to get help about the homeworks during the uh, office hours. So um, of course the DAs cannot uh, solve the uh, homeworks uh, for you or give all too specific help for those homeworks. Um, so generally those office hours are about understanding uh, course material. So um, the challenge of the homeworks is to apply the, the general things that you learn in the course to one uh, specific use case uh, typically. So um, they will indirectly help you by explaining uh, course material which is required for the homework but it will not help you to uh, specifically apply the course knowledge to the uh, homework at hand. So yes, I mean, in general, if you have a question about the uh, course content, there's something that uh, remains a little bit unclear, then uh, first uh, thing you should do is to post the corresponding question on Piazza, because if you have a question, chances are good that somebody else has the same question. And if we, answer that question on Piazza, then everyone can benefit at the same time. So if your question doesn't get answered on Piazza, or if you uh, feel that uh, um, you need some a more in-depth discussion, something which cannot be handled easily uh, via Piazza, 
then I recommend you to check out uh, one of the uh, office hours, either by me or by one of the uh, TAs. Um, but uh, yes, so yeah, so Piazza first and then uh, office hour. And question is whether we can take uh, 4321 concurrently with this class. Yes, you can. It uh, even, I mean, so typically people who are taking the database practicum 4321, uh, uh, they have taken the introductory database either in a previous semester or are taking it in the same semester because the, uh, the practicum focuses on the implementation of the database management system. So uh, getting some background on database management systems is uh, kind of required. So you need to have some background on, you ideally want to have some background on database management systems in order to do that. And uh, so, yes, I think uh, if you want to take both of them uh, in the same semester, that totally works and that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Any more questions on course logistics? Do you have time for one or two more questions? All right, there doesn't seem to be any questions for the moment. All right, and if you come up with any questions uh, afterwards, then I recommend to first uh, ask them on Piazza and otherwise, um, since we haven't fully posted the office hours yet, either write me a mail or uh, some of the office hours are already posted, uh, you can already start uh, going to those. All right. Good, all right, then uh, see you on Friday. And uh, as discussed, I recommend to install Postgres because uh, we already start doing some little exercises where uh, having access to Postgres uh, makes it more fun. All right, have a nice day and see you on Friday. <laughs>